prioritize that red side uh, first, you know, because they do want to get that uh, that two champion priority. And I mean, I'd, I'd love to see them go for uh, yeah, they will be going for the red side first. Hmm. Interesting, actually, because EDG in their match against FPX actually won both of the games and both of both of that games were them being on the blue side as now as they do um decide to be on the red side i think they're trying to equalize the stats as well they, i think they are equally as comfortable being the red side especially being against omg just like what you said they are prioritizing the uh, two pick priority instead of the uh, one and we do see some of the primary champions high pick high band champions being taken away just like a zoe just like a senna just like the shen that leaves omg going back toward, towards the basics getting the zigs edg can actually go maybe with yeah, the jays and one support that has been kind of like the trend in our pick and ba uh, first pick phase on the red side I'm, I'm looking forward to them also securing maybe a uh, maybe a ribbon as well, given that Xiao Jam had a big, big performance during their match against FPX with this champion. Yeah, but no, no, no ribbon coming out at the moment. It is going to be Jason Gragas. Uh, and okay, Fiora and Galio coming in for OMG. Uh, really good champions, great synergy together. Fiora with the grand challenge. Uh, and then coming in with the hero's entrance. While it's no Camille that can Hextech ultimatum, I mean, still having you, the Fiora uh, get that healing field and then just Galio ulting into it, very, very synergistic. And the Riven, yep. though, it will be picked yeah, up. Well, we are going to be seeing it. We are going to be seeing it there on for Xiao Zhang. And... OMG actually is drafting a really nice composition here. You have that side lane control with the Fiora. If ever White Cat is going to be the one using it, though, the Fiora can be used as well in the mid lane. We have seen some, you know, players use this champion in the middle, mid lane as well. And uh, it is going to be a big responsibility because the Fiora can also lose. And we have stated this quite a lot of times already the fiora can lose when the ribbon possess a, a an ignite and we have seen some instances as well that the ribbon kind of gets the the uh, the better end in that 1v1 against a fiora so let's yeah. see how white cat is actually going to be doing uh against xiao jam but their combination is still pretty massive you have the mega yeah. inferno bomb you have the hero's entrance what they only needing right now is that extra front line to help out hmm. the fiora maybe they can actually pick up a, 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 a another fighter here for themselves to uh to set up the place set up the tempo maybe an assassin as well to help out um finish up a team fight in their favor but EDG actually having to go with a safer route, utilizing and banking on and more crowd control with the Wukong suits their composition much better because they have the Gragas for the disengage already. They're banking on now on more engage. They want to go in and commit. That's true. And I mean, the Jax here, that's, that's a lot of commitment here from OMG. They're committing to the scaling composition. Um, and then the Akali. So. We saw a lot of mid lane priority on the bands. SMK definitely a, a very, uh, very scary guy uh, for EDG. So it is going to be a uh, a an Akali for him. Still an assassin, though not uh, not the Zed that he might have been looking for. And now, okay, Oriana though. Oriana though, I. We haven't seen an Oriana hmm. yet, I don't think. Huh. Is this going to really happen? Is this going to really yeah. happen? Yeah. I mean, Oriana um, in the bottom lane? We have been quite, you know, hesitant on on Oriana's over um, because of the current standing of like a meta. But let me remind you Oriana in the Dragon Lane is actually quite popular in the CN conference. 
they they do this quite a lot especially the wrl 2022 season number two they have picked up 20 this champion 25 times and it actually has a 56 percent win rate so it is actually quite reliable the only thing that you have to consider in 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 using this and i want to just point out edg as well has utilized this champion you have a 50 percent win rate on this and what this really works well with champions that are really heavy on engaging the wukong the gragas and both champions actually are in the lineup right now of edg so this oriana might actually just work again as we do it first we do see it first in the wrl 2023 season number one yeah i mean oriana with with both wukong and gragas that's something to be very scared of man uh because when they when they go in what what like you just put the ball on them and then you and then you ult right and then yeah. it's it's just the whole team fights won by that point. One of the reasons why the Oriana uh, popularity has dropped a little bit, aside from you know uh, assassins and fighters and uh, ADC sometimes you know being the ones dominating in the mid lane, aside from the Jays actually, uh, yeah. is that the Oriana, despite it having a really good scaling and really good utility kind of struggles in terms of dishing out damage either you're ahead where you do damage or when you're on par with your enemy mid laner and Ooh. or what's worse behind that's is that you deal absolutely no damage that is the 50 50 for the oriana i mean then she just becomes a utility champion where you try to win team fights off of the strength of her ultimate even though it doesn't really all do all, all the damage in the world so we, we, we we'll see, because like she's still going up against the Ziggs, and the Ziggs is like a such a decent champion in today's meta. Oh yeah. So we are gonna be looking forward to how this actually how this champion is actually gonna do against the Ziggs. Naturally it's going to be even, but in terms of team fight, the reliability of just the Omega Inferno Bomb is making things simpler for team fights. Uh Especially that you only have to throw it when the team fight is happening. You do a massive yeah. amount of damage, and basically, if you throw the Mega Inferno Bomb, you have done your job already. With the Shockwave, you have uh, some chances of error, actually, higher chances of error, because you have to either command attack into the Shockwave, but you have lesser range with that, or command protect into a Shockwave. But if you mess it up, you mess it up entirely. Because you only have a certain distance on the radius of your command protect or for your for your orb. Uh, but if you miss that, then that's going to be quite disastrous on your intended team fight uh, strategy. Yeah, that could be, you know, the definition between winning or losing a, a team fight is the placement of your ball and how uh, how prepared you are to command attack or just. Shockwave into it now. Xiao Zhang and White Cat getting into it a little bit, but so far, not all too much uh, big pressure coming in from the jungle. Shang Dao, though, oh. Oh. Uh, he's gonna be coming in with the with maybe coming in. He just kind of stood there while Hootie and you uh, scrapped with Monster. So, this is still anybody's game. These Chinese seems very, very careful not to give anything away at this point. Oh, yeah. I mean, Hoodie is very, very strong in using this this uh, Gragas, and it's gonna be much, uh, really, really comfortable in uh, in this particular game. What we have to be very careful of is actually for the bot lane. I think it might be a difficult time uh, for this Oriana in uh, in the early game if OMG actually decides to gank here. In the bottom lane, but so far things are looking good here for, for EDG. They're not being extra aggressive, but they're managing to scale up as well. Equal amount of gold, and they're just waiting for the first objective in the 5 minute mark. Yeah, I mean, what what more can you do at this point? You, you just need you just need to get your game plan going, and right now, both teams, they without risking anything, they are just uh, going even in gold. I don't think we're going to be seeing like a huge team fight breakout or 
uh, a, an ambitious dive come out for maybe a little bit. This White Cat, though, he may be a, a decent target here. He is like half health right now, but uh, Chengdu has, has not been uh, able to do all too much. Chengdu. Uh, but Xiao Zhang, though, he's, uh, he may be onto something here. Hudi trying to invade a little bit does not get the blue buff. Uh, just you can see the presence though from both teams coming in. It's uh, Hoodie, Hoodie. Hoodie. It's yeah. actually interesting how to pr uh, how I mean it is quite difficult on my end to pronounce uh, some of the names here of the CN Conference players, but it's also quite enter uh, interesting and entertaining to see how how they they make it. Some of which are uh, red and like. How we do it in, in like English or Filipino, but yeah. some are actually quite in, more into the pronunciation in the in, in Chinese. So it's more of like preference again in the player, uh, I, I guess. But it's also quite entertaining to just study how the pronunciation is. True. I mean, Shang Dao though, uh, going to he take this. Infernal Drake, free, free. Nobody knows he's even there. Um, but across the map, we do see a little bit of a contest here in the Rift Herald. EDG, they are looking for more here against MG, so they have to abandon the Baron. Oh, Indian is still on it. So they're just going to trade objectives. No kills given by either side. Just very objective focus, not really looking to scrap as much as, uh, say, the APAC teams uh, were willing to earlier. Now Jagged White Cat now getting into it, trying to scrap a little bit, but that Riven versus Jax matchup is not uh, in favor of that uh, Jax SMK getting taken very low, but will be able to get out of there really quickly. Oh, okay, now Jagged, uh -oh. he's going to get rest on, and he goes for the Cyclone Monster, trying to go for Mortar, but does not find anything. These teams are just so cautious, they don't want to be the one to give a first blood here. Yep. Okay, Ooh, so this would be it though. Xiao Zhang, he got Ooh. a lot of damage. What a. Uh, that was some great execution, but he just did not have enough damage. Just a tiny, tiny bit off to get the kill on the Jax. An almost kill, but still a nice try coming in here from, from Xiao Zhang. It did force the flash of White Cat, so maybe you can try once again. Mid lane though. Uh, Monster is starting to make some play here. They have spawned the Rift Herald up and will be able to do some damage here in the tower. So, good placement nonetheless. And the yep. GG, they're just, uh, they're just efficiently defending for the meantime. No fight whatsoever. I think this has been the calmest game we have seen as of today. Seven minutes yeah, in, so no team fight, just no massive team fight just yet. I think the the most hot spot oh, has okay, the top though. lane, but. Maybe this one is gonna be the harder one. No, not even a not even a kill there. Unfortunately for uh, for these teams. Okay, so this is gonna be a dive, and it's going to be a very big dive. White Cat getting taken out very low, but he's not dead yet. He's got the Counter Strike on, and he stuns all three of them. However, that's not enough because the monkey does get him, and that's going to yep. be the first kill of the game. First tower as well. So that is a massive lead by EDG building up towards the side lane. We do see as well you winning in this bottom lane against SMK. Yeah. So that signifies EDG basically <laughs> winning two lanes at the same time. And what that says is that OMG's side lane control will be in trouble. Because you have the Jax and that's pretty much his you know, job. As well as Inyan later on with the Fiora. I mean, we do still see the Fiora having a big responsibility in, in split pushing, sometimes in a mid to late game, as well as SMK. But with both White Cat and SMK losing, that is already bad news for OMG. So it's up to one, yeah. one and one now in the mid lane to you know prevent EDG from having access towards his tower. Exactly. And uh, one on one is a. Uh... He, he, he has a pretty big job ahead of him, man. Uh, Shang Dao, though, going to come up, just, uh, get out of there very quick. Like, these these teams, man. I, I cannot stress how safe they both are. SMK now have you getting a little bit of pressure here. It, it's kind of hard to talk about it when there's really not all too much happening. Just a lot of macro movements. We just got the first blood, and after that, there's not much more. Both of these teams, man, so incredibly safe. 
like even with their picks. Not super risky. Just some high maybe level wild drift. Uh, yeah, maybe this time, but maybe not. Well, yeah. I mean, both of them are just trying to gauge, uh, gauge each other down. 20 seconds though before the RH does the respawn, and I think EDG might want to give back a couple of damage towards OMG's first tower after they have lost three plates in theirs earlier. And they are also, you know, having their reset already set up. Visions is kind of even on both sides in the top side river. But OMG this actually might though. get caught here. They're yeah, too deep. Udi is here. They are very deep, but they are able to get out so far. Yu's trying to uh, bully them. In Yang gets a little bit of damage onto Hudi. Uh, Alone is there as well. And he's the one who gets caught out. And okay, might not be. really caught out. Less caught out, more just um, position checking here. Coming from uh, OMG, because they don't really want to risk all too much, neither team. So they're just gonna fight over this uh, this red buff, or this blue buff, sorry. Well, they are gonna be ditching it in, in short while. With the Mountain Dragon spawning up, I think the attention, the interest here of both teams actually have shifted towards this bottom side river. But we have to take into account, EDG is still the one taking control. They still have, they still possess 4,000 gold lead over the course of this 10 and a half minutes. And they are actually starting this mountain dragon as well. And OMG yep. have very little angles into this. Monster is still far away. It doesn't have a flash. It's gonna go in anyway. They're gonna go in. Chow Jam! Oh, they're gonna damage. go in! Finally, Chow Jam dude is very, very low. So incredibly low. Chow Jack. A lot of damage, but he's now low too. The monkey is the one who goes down first. White Cat almost spit the dust there, if not for the shield. And now, let's see, Mega Inferno Bomb. Hoodie is incredibly, incredibly low. Alone is not alone. And even though that was a, a huge explosive fight, we only saw one kill result out of it. Uh, sorry, two kills, one for one. And it is yep. just... This is such a safe game for both teams. Although, look at the gold difference now. And let's take a look at that replay. Yeah, oh, Monster wanted to go in, doesn't have a flash, did connect two uh, on those uh, Shield of the Run, but the follow-up wasn't really there. EDG actually managed to slap them back, almost getting actually two kills in that fight, and basically negating the intention there of OMG. What, the only thing good about that fight is that OMG actually prevented EDG from getting this Mountain Dragon. It is relatively really? tanky, and EDG would need to reset in order to actually start this once again. And they're back on square one. This time, Monster might actually possess the Flash, but no Heroes Entrance just yet. And this is going to be a bit of a complicated fight. EDG strives more in this fight, but there yeah. is a Flash. White Cat, Hours. SMK. Engage for the yeah, And look at that, the big entrance. White Cat, he does go in, he doesn't go down though. And Inyan is there, who's going to get the smite? It's, oh my god, it's gonna be so close. The Shockwave lands on one person. The Drick is still alive, but the Fiora is down. Monsters oh, incredibly low. Shang goes incredibly low. Shang down does down. SMK goes down, and suddenly EDG are on the back, on the front foot. They've gotten three kills off of, four kills off of that actually. It's just their Kali now on the side of OMG. And EDG have gotten everything that they wanted as well as the Dragon. It was a nice intention coming from OMG, but EDG still possessed that AUE crowd control, AUE damage. They tried to pincer them inside this dragon pit, but the pokes are really massive. Xiao Zhang zoning them away and actually cutting the forces there. Hero's entrance a little bit late as well. Though props onto SMK, he actually dealt a lot of damage, especially with his perfect execution, killing even Shengdo 7 there. But it's just two people in exchange for four. EDG still got most out of that situation. Now it's helping them scale up even better. 6,000 gold lead, two dragon stacks, and just everything on the board here for EDG. Yeah, EDG, man, they have gotten like such a big foot up after that one fight. It's kind of insane. And now OMG, they have, uh, they have no outer turrets. They have... Uh, no drakes, and it's just, I don't know, OMG, they, uh, what, what can they do from this point? Because EDG is not going to make, uh, mistakes unless they're forced into it. Now, OMG, what they want to do is make those mistakes, or, or not make those mistakes, make, uh, EDG commit those mistakes, but it's so difficult in this situation now. 
Mm -hmm. I think the key factor here is SMK. Definitely, even if EDG has really strong crowd control, some of their champions are still relatively squishy, primarily Alone and you. So those champions are actually going to be the key targets here of SMK. The job of White Cat and Yanya Inyan is actually to prevent those front lines from penetrating to towards one and one. So I think that can be a good strategy to set in play here for OMG. See, we do see the shockwave damage being a little bit high onto Inyan, but primarily because he took most of the damage, especially with the command attack as well. But ADG yeah. still has some signs of weakness here. And that should be the, the responsibility here, the target of OMG. Find that weak spot, especially in order to reach the back line, and don't hesitate. Try to be as coordinated as possible since they're the ones who has the Galio. Monster yeah. can just use that hero's entrance. Oh, speaking of Monster, uh, I thought he was going to get engaged on oh, there, but ADG, okay. they don't want to risk it. Yeah, they can just uh, play this out. Oh, who do you he's oh. risking this. He goes for a explosive. Guess White Cat, though, he's gonna get Ooh. rescued by the hero's entrance. The uh, shield from that and the magic shield. Now, that means that EDG they have to get uh, they have to get as much as they can, uh, and they do get a tower from that, even though they did get the kill. Oh yeah, I mean EDG are gonna be looking for picks. They're gonna be looking for fights. They're gonna be looking for ways for them to actually start this battle because we're already at the 15 minute mark. And EDG already possess the capability to start this battle up. In OMG, they're the ones who are looking at them and trying to uh, to pose a problem for them. It's just gonna be very difficult given that this top side uh, river is being controlled massively by EDG. One mistake can actually lead onto EDG's ending of this game number one. That's how big of a lead they already possess. Split push by Xiao Jiang as well. SMK doing massive work, preventing this tower from falling up. But the wave actually yep. will st Ooh, okay, 8 HP. Ooh, okay. So, let's see now, because OMG, they are not in the best of positions. While they can still make their way back into this fight, they have to be incredibly careful because going into a team fight with the Shockwave being a threat, it's not the best thing. It's not what you want. Yeah, I mean, you know, you don't want to force fights if we're in your the one not prepared. And OMG is simply not prepared at all right now in this game. They do have a scaling, so I think we have established that already multiple times. But they still aren't online just yet. They're gonna be forced here by EDG though, as we are about to see them attempt to get their third dragon of yep. the game. This is also gonna be Very an ocean dragon. Take. So in terms of sustain, well, you do have, you can maximize your win rate by securing all of the elemental drakes, and that is the goal here of EDG. They're not just going on with just aggression. They want scaling as well. They want perfection in this game number one. And OMG has been on the back end of this game for 17 long minutes. And if they make one crucial mistake, can be the end of it. That, is, that could be it. I mean, just uh, a tiny, tiny mistake could be the difference between life and death here for either team. If I'm being honest here. Oh, shock wave. Oh my God, okay, that is a big shock wave. Now let's see what they can convert off of it. And uh, uh, shine down incredibly low. The hero's entrance comes in, so does the Mega Inferno Bomb. And, okay, so there's one kill onto the Ziggs at the very least. Shang White Dao? Cat now oh on. God. He is on to Shang Dao. Shang Dao goes down through the Akali, but the rest of EDG, they have two gotten one. the Galio. That is a two for one. Uh, Fiora is on the back foot. She has to go back, and this is EDG. They only lost uh, one member. They're still pretty healthy, so they are still aggressing. Eight HP on this tower. White Cat desperately trying to save it, and he does succeed. Um, a, a very, very interesting series of events happened right there. Uh, and the SMK just risking quite a bit. I think we are going to be going the distance here. Uh, Giang, the 18 minutes in, and these teams just do not want to take many risks. And that mm. is a huge flash of body slam, the shockwave as well. Baited Stasis off of two members. The only uh, cause of uh, EDG not having a clean ace in that in that fight is just a small delay in the shockwave that's the only thing but yeah. but the body slam 
of uh, Ludia was actually massive. Bought them into flash, but that one slight millisecond of a delay into the shockwave allowed uh, OMG to actually pop in the stasis and stall and just yep. try to fall back. On losing only two people in exchange for one is good, really good. Chao Jang actually popped in uh, the shield just to stay alive. O OMG has to contest it. They have to turn, but they're the ones actually being turned. Oh yeah, and now OMG, they tried to contest, but now they're Chao on Jack. the back foot. Chao Jang, he is... Uh, he, wow, this for boss getting the bodies that are the response to get up there. And that means that OMG, they have lost one member for pretty much free. And they have to get out of there. And that dragon is going to be going to the side of EDG. Obviously, like, no matter what they do now, uh, EDG just, they have so much map control that, uh, and pressure that it's going to be difficult for OMG to do anything. So, and Elder this Drake Elder Dragon. coming in, it's going to be uh -oh. a game definer now. EDG, um, they're going to take this very easily. OMG, they have to make a desperation play here and pray that it works. For 10 seconds before uh, Monster to actually uh, spawn back up. SMK going with a 1v1 against Xiao Jiang, but it's actually struggling here. And it sends a flash in! Oh my god, oh goes to the stage, but still has to win slash. To actually secure the kill, the kill is not successful, but now, 2,000 on the Elder Dragon, can they actually get a steal? Oh, uh, they might be able to, because oh, Monster is there, he's gone for the hero's entrance, and no, no, steal. no steal! But it was the Oriana and not the smite that secured it, unfortunate for uh, EDG, but OMG, they have to get out of there, they did secure one kill, but that's all they can afford with the Elder Drake buff on EDG. They actually sacrificed two people there, uh, Sheng Dao, and and Huria actually died in that part to allow to allow EDG to have that space, and they did secure the Elder Dragon. I think that's the most important thing. But we now see OMG actually starting to fight back. They have caught one. Uh oh, oh, let's see. That was a big exactly. shockwave coming in as well. OMG, they are on the front foot now, though. They have. It's forced into stasis one member. It was Oriana, but look at that. The help, the guardian angel, get got popped right there. He is on the uh, on the back foot. He has to get out of there. He was able to, and I think we're starting to see OMG now starting to fight back. Eight thousand gold in the while ago, slowly being chipped off. OMG started to scale up. We do see SMK dealing massive damage. White Cat no longer hesitating going in. And EDG is starting to feel pressure. They have so exchanged two people just to secure the Elder Dragon a while ago. And despite them getting it, they haven't gotten any kills just yet. So now, with the Baron available, I think this is going to be quite challenging for EDG. We haven't seen them setting up just yet. And they stop topside river. Why? Because they know that if they force Baron, they can actually lose the fight. OMG will commit and will force them to just go into that 50-50 smite and might actually go towards yep. OMG. And that that is what OMG is counting for uh counting on because they can still win this, but they have to, you know, they have to basically claw it back from the brink of death. And that's what they've been doing. That's what has been happening. But can they make it like can they do the final uh challenge here, which is outsmiting the Baron? And then going for a going for an end after an ace. So will EDG let them get the ace? I mean, let's see. EDG so far is uh, pacing themselves. We do see now almost full build on the solo carries of OMG. Full build on SMK. Almost uh, full, almost a wit send here. Actually, on to to White Cat. So this is their time to actually shine. White Cat should be winning against Xiao Jiang right now, given his itemizations. But we haven't actually seen him though, uh, testing it out just yet. He is mostly there with his allies, with the other M OMG members, as EDG is always kind of pulling yeah. them towards this objective in the yeah. topside river. SMK took a shock blast there, but uh, not much damage actually felt. And in the meantime, now we do see White Cat. He does possess a teleport, if I'm not mistaken. And can actually use it towards this Baron fight, which is EDG starting right now. No vision just yet. 
OMG, Ooh. they don't know this. I mean, they do know, but they don't have any vision they to actually know, contest this. And this is going to be big for EDG. Very free. Very free. Very free. And now EDG, they can push as much as they want. And They're going to be what pushing it. This means for uh, OMG is that they have to uh, make a last stand at their base. Treat it like the Alamo. Because uh, there is no way that they, they can uh, take a fight in clear air right now. And EDG, they're playing it out to save. They are, they are going to be forcing that hero's entrance. Tao Jam might be in trouble. Here comes Xing Tao. Ooh, he is in a lot of trouble. Monster's in a lot of trouble, though. Uh, and he's going to almost get taken down, but he just barely lives with the stasis. Now, lots of... Almost, but not quite here for both teams, for both sides. Zinyan, though, is going to be the first one to go. Xin Dao, incredibly, incredibly oh, low. Oh, Zhao Zhang as well. SNK gets nothing. He gets one. Wada, though. Oh, my God. That Chalkwave did so much help over to SNK. Oh, so, so Nexus. much damage. And now the Nexus is the one that is going to fall. Xiao Zhang is there. SNK, the last line of defense. He's not going to be able to go for long. And that is it. The first game goes over to EDG. Fantastic move with that. They played it a little, a little more safe towards the very end, but still, it is very much effective. So far, they haven't lost a single game.